Five. Yeah, okay. Folks, there is some insane NSLE algorithm. A lot of craziness has been going on. Uh, we've been down for the last 15 minutes. Couldn't even get online. A um, lot of major interference, you know. Uh, you know, with mainstream media owned by a handful of entities, and here in New Brunswick, the Irvings, you know, uh, own it all. It is insane. There's not many alternative media is here we are one of them so we are back uh and uh it's just craziness i don't know what to say but uh we are back um there is no rhyme yeah there's no rhyme or reason to what's uh going on here uh okay i was just setting this up and we're back with lorraine <laughs> Episode two, take two of Camp 134, a year in review. This is day two, um, uh, Tuesday, September 30th, 2014. Hey, up <laughs> How you doing? Good. We are live. So. I know this. We're back. Um, apparently, I was just... Uh, having a conversation by myself over here but i wanted you guys to not at first no, no. have a, a nice view as i talk this is my home my territory our beautiful water um this is a believe river. it or not the backyard of gobit lodge <laughs> and that's a river not a lake folks. yeah this is the, the backyard of Gobit Lodge in Elsie Bookduck. And yes, uh, my name is Lorraine Claire. I am uh, also a mod. Um, and last year, uh, but uh, uh, more on the live stream than anything else. Um, I, uh, like I said, uh, I don't know if we even went live <laughs> because as soon as I sat down, the screen was all messed up so um i might as well just start from the beginning and uh continue from yeah. there i guess so I what i'm gonna do is um what we've been the idea was um because yesterday was the actual anniversary of um the takeover of uh, the compound at 134 um i wanted people to know <clears throat> that there was more to what happened at 134 than October 17th. There was more that happened in this territory than 134. There was um, more people, more faces than um, what you see on the news with the warriors and the... Um, LZ booked a community. Uh, this was an entire provincial um, stand. I you would I would say it was a it went global because we had people and supporters all over the world. And still today, when you see protests out there, there's people carrying our flag, the Mi'kmaq Grand Council flag, with the permission from our uh, district to uh, fly that flag to honor those who uh, took a stand here, the Mi'kmaq Nation, and all of those who helped the Mi'kmaq people take a stand. So um, being that yesterday was the anniversary of that uh, unified stand, I thought that it would be a really good thing to kind of sit back and take a look at uh, what happened a year ago? Um, what led up to 134? What happened at 134? Um, then, um, and then again, uh, what happened after 134? Because a lot of things did happen after that, too. <coughs> uh, the things, uh, the whole fight didn't um, stop. It, after the October 17th, there was still a lot of arrests. There was still um, 
violence towards uh, from the RCMP towards the people, not just the Mi'kmaq people, but all uh, protectors. And we stopped calling ourselves protesters a long time ago. We are protectors. And it doesn't matter what nation you come from. If you're standing up for the rights of the water, the land, the wildlife, you're a protector. And um, so we decided that, well, talked about it here at Gobit that, you know, maybe it's something that would be really good to get this story out and actually um, hear from other people too, not just myself. Um, although I was there at 134 uh, pretty well from the beginning. And then uh, actually I've been on the line almost right from the beginning also from June 5th on. Um, of course, I took a break when I was put into a cast and then took a break when they took a break. And <laughs> But um, so I, I'm kind of, you know, at this point, I'm going to just sort of put a call out to anybody who was in the area last summer, anyone who uh, wants to come and speak to us, if you, uh, you can put your um, name on the bottom or like message us here. And what we can do is uh, maybe Skype you in and you can tell your story. Uh, people who are not from El Zibokduk, and I, and I know there's a lot of them that are all over the place. They've come from everywhere. I remember talking to a fellow from Australia. I talked to a guy from uh, Northern Ontario. I, like, I talked to so many people, I don't can't remember hardly any names. But, um, you know, I'm putting a call out to anybody who uh, wants to take part in this, uh, this memory walk and um, just share your stories. I mean, uh, good or bad, we want to hear it all. And I think the people want to hear it all. And I think it's time that uh, the real story comes out. Um, and this is going to help. This is really going to help the people with the healing. It's been a year um, in our tradition when um, uh, when you lose somebody uh, to the spirit world, our belief is that you mourn <coughs> for a year and then you have a very large feast and celebration for that life and then you begin your healing. And um, I think that's what we need to do here. We need to do this in our community. We need to do this in our province. And we need uh, Mother Earth to heal. I mean, she's only been uh, at rest really since uh, December. It's not even a year yet uh, without any kind of effects or hindrance from that this company. But the, uh, the people who uh, were there, they definitely need to be honored the um, so what we're planning is in uh, to kind of give a rundown uh, for uh, to commemorate to um, not really celebrate what the RCMP did but to honor all of those who took that stand and we'll do it on the anniversary of the 17th and we'll make it uh, more of saying thank you to all of those people who stood up there, the ones who got pepper sprayed, the ones who got shot, the ones who uh, were knocked down, the ones you know, like that had you know suffered such and not only the ones who you know suffered the physical but the ones who also suffered the the mental anguish um, watching everything happen on the news, watching uh, uh, the live little bit of live stream that did go through. Uh, that affected a lot of people, and it, um, it it's hurt a lot of people, and we're kind of hoping that by getting this out and having like a very huge, 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 long, long talking circle, um, that we're going to be able to get some of this out and help people to heal. So on the 16th um, of October, we are going to light a, a one-day sacred fire at the exact same spot where the sacred fire was at the 134 camp and we're going to light that and give the people 
um, that uh, that day, the sixteenth, um, that day to come and you know say their uh, uh, prayers or uh, come and gather at the uh, one thirty four to uh, you know just to come and you know. I don't know, say their goodbyes or, you know, whatever it is that they need to do, I guess, their closure. And then on the morning of the 17th, we're going to gather and have a sunrise ceremony at, uh, I believe it'll be about five, maybe six o'clock in the morning when this, this I say six, it's going to happen. Uh, the sunrise ceremony will happen right there at the 134 the ceremonies and everything will occur and then once that's done uh, the fire will be closed but it won't be put out it'll, it'll allow to go out naturally and um, then things will start happening at the community center at noon after that we're gonna start with some talking circles healing circles um, uh, then that's going to go right straight through until probably three, maybe four o'clock. Uh, of course, you can't put a time on uh, talking circles because <laughs> the uh, the creator has control over that, not us. But uh, we're we're saying around three ish, maybe four. We would start um, having uh, the gathering in, at the community hall and having the people that um, um, we want to honor and have their and you know say thanks to for doing what they did and um, we have a very very long list of people and um, then after that we're gonna uh, have some guest speakers come in we have a number of people who actually want to come in and share their thoughts and their gratitude to our community and to uh, our province for fighting this uh, company and um, so we have guest speakers that are going to come in. We have people who are volunteering to come in and be entertainment. So what we want to plan on doing with that is having a um, sort of like a break in between speakers and have somebody maybe come up and do a drumming or a guitar or fiddle or like whatever, um, just to kind of give a break in, in between the speakers and, you know, um, give people a chance to get up and walk around and, you know, stuff like that, right? So that's going to be, um, uh, we're saying about three o'clock after that, it'd be, um, we're going to have a lunch or no, we're going to honor the people. Then we're going to have a, a supper, a feast. And the feast is going to be uh, a potluck. We're going to be just asking for donations from our community and surrounding communities. And after that, there's going to be, uh, a slideshow of the year. Um, I'm I'm thinking it's not going to be a little bit more than the year. It'll probably go right from June to. Uh, I, I want it over there. Okay, okay, okay. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll have that uh, slideshow showing pictures of people and uh, you know things that had happened and. Uh, like I said, some good, some bad. And um, after that, we'll close the day with the honor song and have uh, the entire group that's there to uh, stand in unity and uh, sing the Mi'kmaq honor song. So that, uh, and then after that, the stage will be open to uh, anyone who wants to come in and uh, entertain themselves or entertain us. Uh, I karaoke. Possibility of, of karaoke, <laughs> and uh, a lot there's a couple of couple of bands who want to come down and uh, donate their time and do a couple sets here and there. Uh, we have people who just want to come in and you know do some drumming and do some different things. So basically, after the ceremony is over. The stage will be open, and it'll be like an open mic night. Face painting for the little ones. Oh, okay. I guess we're going to have oh. some face painting going on. Um, little ones and Howard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're trying to get uh, some things going here. We have people who are willing to come in and help us out, and you know, but more the merrier. We have a number of things that we're going to do to raise money for this, to try and get um, uh, the funds, you know, for the food and everything. We're going to have a yard sale, bake sale, October 5th at uh, the Elzebukdak Arena. Arena parking lot. 
that one uh, we're going to be asking for donations also and anybody who wants to come and help uh, ma cool. maintain the uh, the yard sale bake sale and we're actually going to have a, a barbecue going on that day also um, so we're going to have some hot dogs hamburgers going uh, that's October 5th that's on a Sunday I believe and then uh, starting uh, yes today Sunday. starting on fifth, oh, fifth is Sunday yeah so starting today we are putting out uh, taking orders for homemade chicken pot pies and um, people who want them they can just go onto the Gobit Facebook page and put in an order how many they want and everything else will um, stop taking orders on the 6th and we'll have the deliveries uh, we will be personally the delivering them on the 7th so that's another thing that we're going to do I believe they're like five dollars a pot pie or something like yep. that not very expensive but very delicious uh, then we have a merchandise bingo um, October 12th and that's going to be at the Elsie Book Duck Sports Bar which is off of uh, 116 it's right on 116 actually Highway 116 and that's going to be uh, uh, actually also donations we're going to be going around asking you know the different stores and whatnot to uh, donate some items and we'll have a nice um, and that's going to be just before Thanksgiving so maybe you have a Thanksgiving theme of some sort uh, we're going to have a uh, weekly bottle drive. So, if anybody out there in the local areas around here listening, we will have trucks going around and collecting bottles to help uh, fund this event. And then uh, two Saturdays in a row, uh, it doesn't say the dates here, but the, um, if there's going to be two Saturdays where we're going to have a 50 50 poker night. The 4th and the 11th. 4th and the 11th uh, will be a 50-50 poker night. And the idea with that is uh, if we set it as a $10 buy-in, then $5 will go to the event and $5 will go to the pot for the people who are playing uh, in the poker game. And that's here at Coburn. And that, the poker game will be here at Covid Lodge. So that's some of the things that we have planned. Um, for the fundraising and then of course what we have planned for that night uh, that day actually it'll start the uh, the morning of the 16th which is the day before and then we'll continue on straight through um, we're expecting that people will just you know slowly roll keep rolling in and out and uh, Gobit Lodge will be open uh, from what I understand around the clock for this so for donations, if you want to come in, uh, drop off donations for any of these events, the um, uh, merchandise bingo, yard sale, bottle drive, anything like that, Gobit Lodge is open 24-7. You can you know drop it off here. Any uh, Even if you want to just drop off some money to us, we'll take that too. Uh, <laughs> but um, like I said, it, it's uh, none of this is going to us. It's going to the people into the event and uh, everything will go back all the money will go back into the event and we're going to make sure that uh, we honor the people who uh, were there and we honor them in true fashion so um, um, so that's what's going on um, to get back to uh, what we were talking about before which I thought I was like, but I know I wasn't. <laughs> but anyways, um, we, um, like I said, uh, a year ago yesterday, we, the uh, community, communities, um, took over the um, 134 camp. Uh, if you watched the video, the live stream yesterday, you seen, you know, we went, we did a walkabout. We showed you exactly where the encampment was, how large it was, because we walked the, the perimeter of it, and um, all the areas that was there. The um, well, We didn't actually walk through the different campsites, but um, if the weather gets any better, we probably will go and do that. Um, so basically, uh, the 29th, there's a little bit of uh, scuffles and whatnot. That wasn't all that bad. The 30th... Uh, 
I don't even remember anything really uh, <coughs> big, but I, for some reason, I think the 30th, this was the day that the trees came down. I don't know if any of you guys remember the day the trees came down. I think, I don't know why, but I'm thinking that that happened on the 30th. Because when we had the um, uh, Treaty Day celebrations, the trees were down, right? Yeah. yeah the yeah. trees were laying down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I'm thinking that's when the trees did come down, was on the 30th. That, um, that in itself was yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> um, we, um, you know, like we, this, uh, a number of people decided that, you know, we were going to stay there. We we're going to occupy. We're going to, uh, make sure that SWN does not do any more work in our territory. And we wanted them to take their stuff out. So of course media showed up and everything else. And they started telling the, you know, our story sort of, uh, it's kind of hard to get a, a real story out there when, um, the papers and the news and everything is um, owned by the enemies, <laughs> the enemies out there. And so it was really hard for us to actually get our real stories out. Okay. Uh, the CBC and all of them came in, but again, when it got aired, we got these little blurps and the real story wasn't being told. Like it just it didn't, it seemed like it was a very half viewed uh, issue where it was just us, uh, meaning the First Nation people. It was our issue. It was our fight. It was ours, our, but it wasn't. It was everybody's. And um, so it was really hard to actually get a, a, you know, a real true perspective of what was going on. Through the mainstream media, except yeah. for Occupy Toronto, we've been covering it a lot. Yeah, but um, the Occupy uh, was only covering uh, the warrior camp, there was no real, well, uh, done, the entire area or anything like that well, from what I, uh, what I seen. We were covering what was going on in June and July. We were, we did the series at the end of August, beginning of September of, we interviewed you and a whole bunch yeah. of other people. Yeah. We did stuff here and there throughout <laughs> September. But the live stream afterwards was only be being done through the trailer. Warriors, right? and we would interview you and some other people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, a lot of it was from Suzanne Patlas and uh, the Nova Scotia Warriors. Yeah. From in the camp. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. That's what I was talking mm -hmm. about. From mm -hmm. That's the only uh, other uh, media source that we had was uh, it was being... Um, there was live stream happening, but it was happening from the trailer on the other side. So there really wasn't, uh, you couldn't really tell what was really happening except for what you seen or what you heard from, uh, the, the warriors. So you didn't really get, uh, again, still didn't get a full, um, two sided picture. It was all just the one side. Of, um, so it was, um, so on the 30th, like I said, that's when the trees came down and that's when um, the actual, um, okay, serious seriousness of it happened where we said um, that, okay, this is it, we're here. We're, we're actually taking a stand. Uh, the trees came down, blocked um, both the highway, not the highway, but the uh, 134. And uh, on both sides of us, on the uh, where the entrance to the compound, we uh, the warriors came in. Uh, some of the community members all came in and just started chopping trees and letting them fall. And that was basically the the stand that was uh, taken. And so camps started being built, thing different uh, shelters and whatnot. Uh, people started bringing in stuff, uh, tents and. Th different things like food and um, so really right from there it started being a very um, uh, serious situation that uh, we're not going anywhere and they I think they got the message because the RCMP backed off uh, quite a ways from us if you've seen the video yesterday I pointed out in the areas where they took their um, their hold, I guess, and, uh, where we took ours. So 
there was a really big area that they had left, a really big buffer zone between us and them. And um, But we still had our issues. Um, even that night, um, er, early that evening, uh, our chief went out, uh, like left the compound, left the area, and he wanted to come back, and they weren't going to let him back in. So... Um, I don't know how, what happened, but the people up higher at the camp, at the compound, heard. So, I don't know, probably about 30, 40 people ran down to the um, area where our chief was and um, ended up with a little bit of a, more of a yelling match and a not really... Um, I wouldn't say that it was any kind of scuffle or anything, but it was just more of, you know, how dare you try and stop our chief from, you know, walking his territory sort of thing, right? So, um, the, um, every time something happened, they had to stop, call the commander, uh, do this, do that, the other thing. And it was really ridiculous when, if the commander was actually on the ground, uh, when something did happen, all you would, they would have to do is just say, okay, you know, look, talk to the commander. But, you know, the commander was never around. He, um, if he was, he never showed himself or she. Um, and so it made it really hard for if something did happen, if an incident did happen, if there was a disagreement of some sort somewhere that there was never really, uh, it almost had to blow up before it got uh, anywhere is close to being resolved. So, um, yeah, it made for a, a few, uh, tense moments. Um, and that was on both sides. Um, the RCMP were, um, being a, a little bit pushy at times and, uh, very, um, ignorant to some people. They were, um, uh, supplies were being brought in and they weren't allowing the supplies to come in. Uh, they were denying us our actual human rights, uh, food, water, and, uh, you know, all those other stuff. Right. So they, uh, they weren't going to allow it to come through. And then of course, another brouhaha happens. And then the commander comes in and, oh, okay, we'll give you this if you give us this. And we're like, no, you're not doing that because we don't, uh, we're not in negotiations. Uh, this is not a, a, a matter of negotiations. This is, you come down, you get our SWN down here, you get their stuff, um, and leave. That, that was the whole thing. There wasn't, um, as far as we were concerned, uh, there was never any negotiations. Um, I've heard the word said quite a few times by, um, the warrior, the leader there, um, Jim Picto, quite a few times he, I heard him use the word negotiations. We're in negotiations, but um, I don't know who he was in negotiations with because uh, none of us had even agreed to any kind of negotiation, uh, not even to sit down. So I don't know, you know, what was happening there, but uh, the... Um, Whenever we wanted something, there, as far as we were concerned, there was no deal. There was no deals going to be made. We weren't going to give up one thing for the other, and um, the only thing that we were going to do is uh, wait these guys out until uh, they came and got their stuff. But um, you know, some of you know that didn't happen. But um, the thirtieth was. Uh, it was, you know, we had that moment and then we had a few moments after that, but basically, um, that was the time where people started saying, you know, like they, they were at the point where they said, okay, we've had enough, like enough is enough. Uh, let's take our stand and stay here. So people started coming and actually saying, okay, we're going to support you guys a hundred percent. Um, we can't be here because we're in fear of losing our jobs or we can't be here because we're in, in, uh, you know, we fear, you know, what may happen, you know, with tensions and whatnot, but we're going to support you. And, uh, so they would come and, you know, bring us, you know, different supplies, food, water, clothing, 
you name it. I mean, we had things that were being dropped off, stoves, tents. Uh, oh, wow. It was just unbelievable, the stuff that we were getting. I mean, we had to make a tent just so that we could <laughs> store all of the, the donations that was coming in. And, you know, the... Um, on the next day, which is uh, going to be for us uh, tomorrow, is uh, Treaty Day. And I think that day was uh, more a powerful day than any any of the other days that we ever had. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, speak more of that uh, tomorrow, but... Uh, Maybe tomorrow we'll do it from here. We'll mirror a lot of videos from that day. Yeah. Um, including the chief Aaron's office press conference. Yeah, Aaron did. Uh, he, uh, it was really great. Yeah, you know, all the people that spoke and everything. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, like I'd like to put a call out to all the people. Like you know, if you um, if you were here, even if you were here for a day, if you were here for an hour, uh, you know, give us a call or uh, you know, give us your Skype. We'll 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 Skype you in and you know have a chat. Um, or if you want to drop by, um, either uh, we'll let you know what location we're going to be at. Either we'll be here at Gobit Lodge or we'll be um, right there on the site of 134. If, um, you know, if you just want to drop by and hang out, um, if we do go to 134, we'll probably have a nice little fire going and um, sit around like the old days. Um, uh, it was, it was, um, the thing of it too is uh, when the media did come in and when you know things did get out there, it was more of uh, oh my god, a, you know, a standoff and uh, the Indians are erupting and everything else. But if you really actually came in um, and sat with us at the camp, you would have it would have been like you know we're all here at a, a great big uh, uh, I don't know family reunion or something. It was just it just seemed like it was. Uh, yeah, you know, we were just hanging out. Um, besides all of the hundreds of RCMP officers that were around us, um, it was a very well secured family reunion. I would say the um, we had all these people coming out and sitting with us and talking, and we ended up, uh, you know, like <laughs> I I remember somebody. I don't know if they took a picture or a video, um, but there's this little guy walking around. Um, actually he was driving around on a, on a tricycle it was just, you know, no fears whatsoever. Just like playing around. Like there was more kids out there running around and playing and having a blast running through the woods and playing hide and seek and, you know, parents running around after them. Um, that, you know, not everything was all, you know, horror and terror. Um, there was a lot of things that happened, a lot of good things that happened. Um, when it was decided, like I said there, uh, of putting the sacred uh, light, having the sacred fire lit, you know, even that itself was uh, a very um, a spiritual time and for a lot of people. So, you know, I, I just want to kind of get rid of that, um, I don't know, the, the false sense that we were under attack 24-7 and we were... Um, you know, we were like, you know, behind these barricades and, um, everybody kept referring back to Oka. Oh, it's going to be another Oka. Oh, Oka. Um, it was pretty close to being the same because, uh, you know, I, I did talk to some people in Oka and, you know, they, they said that, uh, you know, yeah, they had their tense moments too. But a lot of times it was sitting back and doing it pretty well exactly what we did. And um, the only time that there was any kind of tension or anything is when the, the Warrior Society and the uh, the RCMP would go head to head on an issue. And um, so it just ended up being, um, you know, the rest of us kind of sat back and enjoyed uh, the company and the camp and the food that been was being brought to us. And we... Um, you know, there was no, there was, I didn't really, you know, have any kind of uh, fear or any, uh, I didn't feel intimidated by the RCMP being out there. Like, you know, they provided us with light. They, you know, they had these great big spotlights that they put on the highway and uh, 
I don't know if they thought that if they lit up the whole area that it would, uh, you know, keep us away or something. I don't know, but actually it just let, gave us light that we could uh, go and see through the woods and walk around and <laughs> not uh, fall and break our necks. So the, uh, anyways, the, um, I guess I don't, I can't really remember too much of what happened on the 30th, except that, you know, we had lots of laughs and, uh, people came around and, um, we just sort of, uh, you know, made ourselves at home in, uh, or in our own territory for some of us. And, um, but like I said, that was the day that the trees came down and they, these were really big trees too. And, uh, once that happened though, it, it did kind of raise tensions and the RCMP were thinking, um, uh, they were, I don't know what they thought that, you know, we were all sitting back there with the AK 47s or something. Cause you know, that that's when they brought out the big spotlights and stuff like that too, to, uh, make sure that they could see us, I guess. But, um, you know, there was really not a whole lot that happened after that, except, uh, like I said, the only time anything really happened is when there was a, a clash between uh, opinions between the, the Warrior Society, the Nova Scotia Warrior Society, and the um, RCMP. And that uh, that was usually... Um, uh, a lot of that, I don't even, re don't even know where it came from, came from but uh, like I said, I kept hearing the word negotiation from uh, Jim Picto and I kept hearing, uh, you know, whenever anything, you know, happened, anything erupted, it was, seemed to be him doing, uh, doing all the yelling and, and screaming. So, um, I don't know, uh, you know, when you look, when you're looking at it from the other side, like from the inside out, it, it definitely does look a lot different than, uh, from the people who are looking at it from the outside in. Um, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of things said and done. Uh, within the camp and people don't um, people don't see that uh, you know there there you know there really was some uh, tensions and stuff and uh, the reason for the sacred fire um, you know it was definitely needed it, we needed that calm and uh, the, the serenity to come back to the people and to calm them down and get rid of the um, I don't know, um, I don't know what it was, whether it was anxiety or boredom or whatever it was of some of these young fellows who just, uh, were getting all hyped up and, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, wearing the camo, uh, kind of, uh, changed a lot of these kids in, in some ways good, in some ways not so good, but um, our, our intention was to, to be there to protect, to protect the people and, um, to protect our first and foremost, uh, reason for doing this was to protect the land and the water. Um, uh, after a while, when we took the camp and the, the occupation started, it ended up being that we had to, uh, start protecting the people. Um, and that's kind of uh, where I came in, where I actually started becoming, um, actually started um, becoming um, the the voice, you know, for the people and the to protect uh, the ones who are coming in, you know, from any kind of, uh, you know, any negativity, any negative forces or anything like that. So it was very tiring. Uh, it was very draining for me. It was, um, uh, it was really hard. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the COVID Lodge is, uh, like I said, we're getting ready for this, uh, event. And, uh, right now we got a lot of people in here and, uh, they're getting ready for to making signs and whatnot. So if you, uh, all the noise you hear going on in the background is these guys getting ready for all of that. Um, but, um, yeah, like I said, after a while it got, um, got really hard, got really draining. Um, it, it seemed as though that, um, 
I could barely uh, <laughs> get any time to, to rest when somebody would come, you know, what we need this, we need that, we need, uh, um, you know, it, just, it was just constant. I was on the go all the time. Not until I uh, actually went and hid in my lodge and, and uh, I, you know, well, if I could hide for at least an hour or sometimes at night, then uh, I, I did good in getting some sleep. So it was um, it was draining physically. It was uh, definitely emotionally draining. And um, but spiritually, I mean, I if it was up to me, I'd still be standing there, you know. Um, so like it was, uh, it was a very like strong spiritual, it was a very strong spiritual event. And, uh, it like, uh, some people have said, you know, that that's when they had received their spiritual awakenings in a sense. And, uh, I'm hoping that some of these people will come out and share their stories and let us know that, you know, let it, you know, share their stories. Let us know what happened and, uh, why, you know, things turned around in their lives for them. And, um, the, um, you know, these stories, some of them people have already shared with me, but I would rather them come and share them with you or give me permission to share their stories. Um, so the, um, like I said, uh, the place is getting pretty hectic, pretty loud. Um, you want to tell them why? The I already day. did. Okay. Um, so it, it's, um, I think maybe we should, uh, I know I didn't really explain too much of what happened on that day, but um, like I said, there there really wasn't a whole lot uh, that occurred on the 30th, uh, but just to kind of let you guys know that, you know, um, give you a little recap of yesterday and to basically... Um, let you know what's happening now, what we're planning on doing, and um, what's uh, what's coming up as far as the show is concerned. Like we tomorrow, we are going to. Uh, it is Treaty Day tomorrow. Um, we are going to um, um, show the videos and stuff of uh, our, our chief reading the BCR that was signed and authorized by uh, the chief and council here. Uh, very powerful, very powerful uh, BCR. It was a very powerful moment altogether with what happened on that day last year. And um, so I just basically want to you know, let you guys know what's coming up. And then um, as the, the show goes uh, and as we get closer to the actual uh, the, the, the day, um, We'll just continue explaining you know, things that had happened and things that are going on. And um, I, I, this is all my view right now. Um, this is just my story. This is, uh, um, uh, like I said before, I've never been able to sit down and actually write this out or, or do anything. So I just figure, you know, this is a really good way to do it. You put it on, uh, you know, save it on archives and whatnot and we can um you know go back to it years later and you know see what the difference is and whatnot you know have our grandkids look at it or something but um we don't um we're not uh the people who were there uh it's their choice if they want to come and have their short their stories told i'm, I'm not going to speak for them unless they ask me to everything that uh that i'm going to talk about is what uh pretty well what i've seen what i've experienced uh what i went through there um my my victories my defeats and uh everything else in between um it, yesterday I, I forgot to mention that like we um after i was hit by the the police car um they weren't going to allow the ambulance to come in to uh, to come and get me and so that caused a lot of tension there for a while that you know they weren't going to allow the, um, an ambulance in um, so again you know there was a little bit of a scuffle and everything you know, not a scuffle but you know yelling and screaming at each other you know 
Um, and so that got resolved. The ambulance was able to come in. And I have a video somewhere. I can't find it, actually. But uh, there's a video, a few videos of uh, what happened that day. Um, I don't know if there's one of me actually being hit, but there's videos of me uh, being taken into the ambulance, uh, me being in the ambulance with the uh, Christian peacekeepers. I wanted to make sure that this had gotten documented because, um, you know, it was, to me, it was a, you know, assault with a <laughs> deadly weapon, really, because I was hit by an RCMP vehicle. So, um, but they, um, afterwards, um, they, they kept saying, well, you should go to the hospital. You should go to the hospital. I said, I'm not going to the hospital. And they're like, why? I said, well, I know if I leave here and go to the hospital, I'm not coming back. They're going to arrest me on the spot. And I had that fear um, right from that day, from, from September 29th right to um, the actual day that I got arrested on the 14th. Every day I lived. <laughs> every day I lived in fear of being arrested. Every day I lived in fear of uh, the RCMP coming after me. Uh, and it turns out that it, it wasn't uh, paranoia, because they actually did come after me. Um, but you know, like ever since then, and I can, and still today, I, you know, I don't trust the RCMP. I don't um, respect, uh, it's kind of a big thing to say, but I really don't respect a lot of them. Uh, there are some of them that, yes, I do respect. Uh, they're, they're family as far as I'm concerned, but there's some of them that, uh, and that's like majority, <laughs> that I would not give the time of day to right now. And I don't know when that will ever change. Um, but you know, like I said, like this is all about like this is my side of the story. This is what I seen. Um, this is what I went through. So like, don't take this as uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, it's true. Like you know, it's my story. But you know, don't include everybody in my story because, like I said, everyone has their own story, and. Um, unless they ask me to speak on their behalf or come here and sit and talk with us, then, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to put anybody else's uh, face, anybody else's name in here unless you know, they want to. Uh, you know, even me doing this, um, it's, uh, I have yet to be charged. Well, yeah, I've, I've been charged. I've been arrested. Um, but, I have yet to have my day in court. So um, things that I say and do right now on live stream um, could incriminate me. So that's why I'm trying to uh, be very um, careful on some of the things that I, I say. And, um, and that's another reason why I wanted the camera facing that way. <laughs> um, you can um, hear the voice, but you can't see the face. So, because um, only the shadows. Yeah, there's only the shadows now. So, um, yeah, the. I don't want to. You know, I I might sound like I'm uh, stuttering all the time and everything, but I have to be very very careful. Uh, what I say, I have to be careful every day of what I do. Um, because I'm under uh, really strict conditions. Um, I have to be of uh, keep the peace and be of good behavior. I never was mm -hmm. of good behavior all my life, but now I have to be. But anyways, the um, you know that's basically me. That was um, the 30th and just to kind of let everybody know that you know this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And um, so if anybody has any questions or anything like that, you know, you want to know anything uh, about the camp, uh, feel free to um, message D or uh, find me on Facebook. Um, you can um, 
actually, uh, if you want, you can log into Gobit and, um, you know, throw us some questions. Uh, you know, what we'll do is maybe uh, keep a log of some of the questions that come through. And um, mm. what we can do is, uh, you know, just before we start the episode or whatever, we can answer some of your questions. And, you know, you may be sitting there listening and thinking, you know, I don't have any questions, but then as soon as we go off the air, somebody's going to have a question. <laughs> it's just like every other thing, every other, you know, anything else we've done. Yeah. But, you know, I think it'd be a good idea if, you know, like if you had some questions, just post them on uh, the Go With Lodge Facebook, uh, put them on my page. Check out the events. Go on and all of the events, the fundraising events that are going to be Please. happening. You can actually, uh, if you had questions about any of those, go ahead. Uh, post your questions. Let us know what's going on, uh, what you think, if you can help out. Uh, leave your name on any one of the events. Um, to, uh, Gobit Lodge is open 24-7 for anybody who wants to come in and help out. Anybody who wants to uh, donate some items for bake sale, uh, yard sale, yard. merchandise bingo. And then, of Ooh. course, we're going to have a couple of fun nights of uh, poker night. 50-50. Karaoke yeah. night. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> they had one last night at 2 in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was like 2.30 by the time they turned it off. <laughs> That's why there, you guys keep waking me up in the middle mm, of the night coming home. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> so, no. But anyways, no, we're going to... I just ditch and I go out. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, unless anybody has anything to say... Any comments? Any comments? Um, I'm not seeing anything from anybody. Hello. <laughs> echo, echo. World. Hello, <laughs> world. Let's see. My comment didn't even come out on there when I. What the heck? Maybe I am getting. The, they upgraded the new NSA algorithm. That's why it took us four tries to get on this time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there's some crazy back end stuff that's happening. Um, they're getting nasty. Okay, there's something a, going on with the chat because it's I'm not even I can't even post. Could be laggy, meaning uh, it could take sometimes thirty seconds to a minute to appear. Um, okay. It is laggy because Jola moved and then she just disappeared now in the screen. No, that's okay. no, 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 no. The, the one. that one. That's what it does. <laughs> this one is live. Yeah. This one is what the world oh, wants to yeah. like. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what I Hello, said world. too the last time I went on. Is when I saw it's live. Which yeah, shows like, oh, the NSA algorithm. Mm. Uh, so, any, anything to protect the mainstream media's lies. Um, anyways, I've so talked we're, we're almost um, We're almost to the uh, hour mark anyway. Um, well, according to the live stream yep. clock, yep. Uh, we're accurate. almost to the hour, the, to the hour mark. Uh, we did say that we would come on for about an hour each day, just to kind of, uh, or longer, depending on how many people want to come in and talk. Um, so just to kind of, uh, let everybody know, you know, things that happened on each day, day and, um, nice. uh, like, um, just to kind of share, really. Uh, this is what we did when we were there at 134, sat around the fire, and we shared. Mm -hmm. We laughed, you know, joked. Uh, you know, we had people who, uh, you know, got news of, you know, lost loved ones while we're there, and we, we helped, and we, you know, we came together, and we prayed, and we sang, and we, you know, you know some of us cried, and some of us laughed until we peed ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But, change on all five. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for depends. Oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I'm gonna call it a night, and um, I hope that. Uh, oh yeah, any of my students who may have logged in, remember you have an assignment due. <laughs> 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 well, I told him, you know, um, that I will be on live tonight, and 
you know, if they wanted to check it out. But uh, yeah, MBHS, you rock. Oh, cool. <laughs> what? Um, Is your goal? No. Okay. But uh, if you guys, um, you know, anybody table. wants to, you know, let us know your opinions, your questions, anything like that. Talk to the, what do you call it? Um, the director. D. Uh, anybody, you can get a hold of him through uh, live stream, through Facebook. Occupy Toronto, through Facebook, mm -hmm. Gobit Lodge, and uh, yeah, you can and find me, Lorraine Claire, on Facebook, um, and just whatever you want to uh, do. And we're centralizing everything that we're going to do for this October 17th on the Facebook do events do page do 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 do. and the Gobit Lodge page. Okay. Yar. And don't forget, we're going to have a yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that way. We should have put that on the yard. Side. But you, you got to fit at least 10 hours. Yard. <laughs> apostrophe D. <laughs> D. <laughs> yeah, when I first got it, I, man, it's almost approaching seven months that I've been here. Yeah. I remember when I first got here, and I think for the first month, everyone was going to Big D, Big D. Big I, D. I, 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 I'm, I'm so humble that, you know, I don't take compliments well. And I, and here, I thought you guys are talking about me, Big D. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Until I found out what Big D in Big Mom means. It means <laughs> hard. <laughs> Yar. Exactly. Big, big. Big, big D. Okay. Big D. Yeah, I heard but it. But when you say D. it really fast, it sounds like big D. Yar. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to go home. <laughs> if they let me. You're not going um, to the meeting? What meeting? There's every se meeting. At 7 o'clock every night from now till the 17th to plan the 17th. Might as well. <laughs> Might as well just stay. I mean, they're going to be taking notes if I go up here, but. You probably like your input, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyways, there's other things we must do. So, um, do you want me to sign sure. up? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll let me do a final. Thing. I want to talk one day. Sure. Okay. Good. Oh, are you going to put little like cupcakes? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I and like uh, here's your clipboard. Oh, yes. To the people. I was there pretty much. Yeah. Cold. So, I'm um, going to. Hi, my name is Dee Shanger. I'm a modern <laughs> live stream director here at Occupy Toronto since day one on October. 15th 2011 and uh yeah and uh so yeah i'm going to research a lot of uh, videos from last year like uh, i know october 1st being treaty day 2013 there was a lot of videos especially that chief and council did the uh, uh eviction notice to swin and had a press conference at 134 so we'll be doing stuff like that and uh since we live streamers never say bye but rather peace out and see you on the live chat folks because you know what we will and yar yar and yar yar and yar ciao folks <laughs>